Your life, your rules. Unlocked with Huawei Mate 7's advanced fingerprint security on a 6-inch display. Huawei Mate 7. Huawei. Fill her up with sunlight. More energy from our sun hits the Earth in an hour than is consumed on the planet in a whole year. But the burning question is, how can we put all that sunshine to work, making usable fuel? And in that one spot, we have the equivalent of 3,000 suns. So we're able to get exceedingly high temperatures. With support from the National Science Foundation's Emerging Frontiers in Research and Innovation, chemical engineer Sosina Haile at Caltech and mechanical engineer Jane Davidson at the University of Minnesota are working to expand the nation's renewable energy storage capacity. Their mission? Put the heat of the sun to work, creating replenishable fuels that don't need to be drilled out of the ground. And what we're doing is collecting enough sunlight to create high temperatures. So collect a lot to get a lot of heat and then use that to drive chemical reactions breaking apart the water molecule or the carbon dioxide molecule in order to make a fuel like hydrogen or carbon monoxide. There are seven concentrators and right in the middle of each one of those is a 7,000 watt light bulb. This is an indoor solar simulator and it can crank out the rays. Davidson and her team gave us a demo, dialing it up to more than 1500 degrees Celsius, burning a hole in this brick. Experiments like this are helping Davidson and Hiley figure out how to harness real sunlight to make synthetic fuels. The smoke coming off, oh, there's already a hole coming melting out the front. Well, that was a success. Yep. They call it sun gas, and it's tank ready. One of the real advantages of solar fuels is that it still powers the same cars that we drive today. You can use it for long distance trucks. You can make fuels for airplanes. You pull up to the gas station and you can get exactly the same product, but made from sunlight, water, and CO2. Sun stations on the corner are years away. Engineers are still working to improve the efficiency of the process but the catalyst used to split water and CO2 is an inexpensive metal oxide called ceria. It can create fuels for cars, power plants, even your laptop. I like to say that I'm fuel agnostic. <laughs> so if you are a technologist that would like to have hydrogen, we can make hydrogen. If you'd like to have syngas, which is the precursor to liquid fuels, which is a mixture of hydrogen and CO, we can also deliver that. We'll deliver whatever fuel you need using sunlight as the input. Converting sunlight into fuel, now that's a hot topic. 